So a lot of folks wonder, how does this work? How do Greenfield Robotics, how does our system work? The way our system works is the first thing we do is after we've agreed to work with the farmer is we will fly the field. Once the crop has emerged, we run a drone through the field and we map the entire field down to about one centimeter accuracy. Uh, we learned how to do this collaborating with civil engineering firms and it's a similar process to what they do to build roads and bridges. And so once that's done, we have a map. And so we know where the crop is, we understand where there's water systems, we understand where there's telephone poles, we understand where there's coyote holes, we understand anything that could get in the way of the robot getting its job done, we know that ahead of time. And so beyond that, once we have that map and you've used our machine vision to figure out all those things and where the rows are and where the middle of the rows are, then we go and someone goes and drops off the robots. It could be us, it could be our co-op partner. And they drop up to 13 robots off at one field. And what do you do? Well, you drop them off at some entry point, and then someone says, I'm in charge of these robots. And that someone is two or three hours away in some instances, and at times we were six or seven hours away from the actual field, right? So they're in the same time zone normally, but... And so they're watching these robots go into the fields. And so what are they doing? Well. The main thing we've done historically and still do is we cut weeds and we cut them right at the ground. Um, we're almost scalping the ground and at a time we've, we do hit the ground and we're zipping along uh, through the rows doing that at a pretty high speed. And those 13 robots are talking to each other, right? And that's what's going on. They're deciding who's taking what row and if one robot something goes wrong and is slowed down, they're making those decisions on their own. There's no humans involved. And so all of that's going on. If there is an issue with the robot, let's say one gets off track or one gets stuck or something like that, then they notify the human and we take action from there. Um, but that is kind of the trick, isn't it? So we do less and less and less of those problems every year to the point that we don't plan on having anyone at the fields again next year. So that's the way that works. And then when they're done or if the battery needs to be charged, they notify us, they drive themselves to the engine end of the field. We swap batteries, we can hot swap them, the robot can still be on. And it takes about 60 seconds, and the robots you can carry one in each arm batteries. And it takes about 60 seconds to swap them, close the lid, let someone know it's done, and it takes off again and starts working again. So it is truly autonomous.